This lesson introduces the concept of convertible agent, a built-in agent class of autogen that can be used to construct multi-agent conversations. You will learn about the basic functionality as well as build your first two-agent chat that shows a fun conversation between two stand-up comedians. Let's dive in. Let's begin with learning the concept of agent. In Autogen, an agent is an entity that can act on behalf of human intent, send messages, receive messages, perform actions, generate replies, and interact with other agents. Autogen has a built-in agent class called Conversable Agent. It unifies different types of agents in the same programming abstraction. It comes with a lot of built-in functionalities. For example, you can use the list of LM configurations to generate replies, or you can do code execution or function and tool execution. It also provides a component for keeping human in the loop and checking for stopping the response. You can switch each component on and off and customize it to suit the need of your application. Using these different capabilities, you can create agents of different roles using the same interface. In the beginning, let's import the OpenAPI open key from the environment. So we will import the get OpenAI API key utility function, run it uh, to get OpenAI API key, and then uh, define a LLM configuration. In this course, we will use uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo as a model. And next, let's import the conversable agent class from Autogen. And we will create our first conversable agent object. Here we use a conversable agent uh, class to define agent named chatbot. We pass this LLM configuration as we define up there to this conversable agent. So then this agent will be able to use that large language model to generate reply. And we also define the human input mode as never. This means the agent will never uh, seek for human input. It will only use this large language model to generate reply. In general, you could uh, switch the human input mode to other modes. For example, you could say always. Then the agent will always ask for human input before it tries to generate reply on his own. And these are only the basic setups for this agent. In general, you could also add code execution configuration or function execution and other uh, settings. But let's begin with this uh, simple setup. The first thing you could do is to ask this agent to generate a response to a question using the generate reply method. Here, we call this agent's generate reply function and give it a message list. The message has a content, tell me a joke, and role as a user. And if we run this, we should be able to get a reply from the agent. The agent says, sure, here's a joke for you. Why did the Scarecrow win the award? Because he was outstanding in his field. So this is the most basic thing you could do by uh, asking a question and get a reply from the agent. Now, if you call this function again, what would happen? Let's say we call this general reply function again. Now replace the content with repeat the joke, right? Do we expect the agent to repeat the joke? Actually, no. Because when we call the general reply function, it doesn't alter the internal state of the agent. So when we call the general reply function again, it doesn't know that it already generated reply before. So it will be a fresh function for general reply. So it will generate a new reply without knowing that it has replied once before. You could certainly do this in application for generating different replies if you want. But if you want to keep the state and maintain the state and make it perform a series of tasks, we need a different approach. In the next part, let's look at how to create a conversation between multiple agents. And we will do a stand-up comedy example. We want to create a application where two stand-up comedians will talk to each other and make fun of each other. So the first agent we'll create is a conversable agent named Cassie. In this case, we give it a system message to let the agent know your name is Cassie and you are a stand-up comedian. And we'll pass the same RM configuration and same human input mode to never. 
When you don't specify this system message, then the agent will have an empty system message and it will just perform as a generic purpose assistant agent. And using the system message, we could customize the behavior of the agent. Okay, that's one comment in we created. How about adding another one? Let's create another console agent named Joe and give the system message. Your name is Joe and you're a stand-up comedian. And we add another instruction after that. We say, start the next joke from the punchline of the previous joke. So this gives us the more specific instruction about how to carry over the conversation. Okay, so we have two comedians. Now it's ready to put them in work and create a conversation. The way we initiate the conversation is we will call this initiate chat function from one of the agents. For example, if we want the Joe to start the conversation, we'll call Joe's initiate chat function. We'll set the recipient as Cassie and give it the initial message. The message says, I'm Joe, Cassie, let's keep the jokes rolling. We set the max turns to be two. So we will have two turns of conversations and then finish. Let's see what happens. So the first message is the same message as we set here. I'm Joe Cassie, let's keep the jokes rolling. And the next message is from Cassie. Cassie said, hey Joe, great to meet another comedy enthusiast. Let's dive right in with some jokes. Why did the math book look sad? Because it had too many problems. And next turn, Joe says, well Cassie, at least now we know why the math book was always so negative. So you can see that Joe follows our previous interaction and starts the next joke from the last punchline. And Cassie follows up, says, Haha, exactly, it just couldn't subtract the sadness from its pages. So it's making continuation of that joke. And finally, it proposes another joke. And after these two turns of exchange, the conversation stopped. So after the conversation finishes, we could inspect the chat history in the chat result. So we import a pp-print library and do a print of the chat history. So you could see all the messages got exchanged. First from Joe, second from Cassie, third from Joe, third fourth from Cassie again. And you could also inspect the token usage in the chat result. We'll call the chat result.cost function. We will see that we are using the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. We consumed 97 completion tokens and 219 prompt tokens. And the total tokens is 316. And the total cost is this much dollars. So in general, you could define the conversation in different ways. You could also check the summary of the chat result by calling the chat result of summary function. So by default, we're using the last message as the summary of the chat result. So in this case, we see that's the last message from the conversation by Cassie. If we want to change the summary method, we could configure with a different summary method. For example, we could run the conversation again with a different summary method called reflection with large number model. And you can give a summary prompt called summarize the conversation. So what it happens is after the conversation finishes, we will call the language model with this prompt and the language model will reflect on the conversation and produce a new summary. So the same conversation happens and the same result happens because we're by default, we're using caching to generate the same messages for the same input. So now if we check the summary again, we see this time the summary becomes the conversation was focused on sharing jokes and puns between Joe and Cassie. They playfully exchanged the math and scarecrow-related jokes to keep the laughs flowing. So that's a better summary. You'll notice that I used the max turns equal to two to control how many turns to happen in this conversation. What if you don't know the right number of turns before the conversation finishes? What can you do? We could change the termination condition by providing additional configuration called is termination message. This is a Boolean function. So it takes a message as input and returns a true or false, meaning whether the message means the conversation should be terminating. Okay, for example, you will notice that I changed the system message here. Say, when you are ready to end the conversation, say, I gotta go. We also pass this 
stopping condition as checking whether the I got goal is inside the message. If we detect the I got goal freeze, uh, we will consider the conversation as finishing. And that is given to each agent. So each agent will check the condition from the received message from the other agent. And if they see the I got goal freeze content in the message they received, they will stop replying. Let's run that. And let's in initiate the conversation again with a new sub and condition and see what happens. So the first few message is um, similar, but this time you can see they have more turns of conversations. Cassie make a joke, Joe responded, and Cassie asked Joe about a different joke, and Joe uh, responded uh, with other jokes. And eventually, the last message from Joe is, glad you enjoyed it, Cassie. Pounds are always a hit. Thanks for the laughs. I got go. Yeah, so Joe ended the conversation with I got go, and Cassie see that freeze, so it, it stopped uh, replying. So this is a different way of stopping the conversation, and it's more flexible. So after the conversation finishes, what if you want to like continue the conversation, or if you want to see whether this time the agent can preserve the state, we can give it give that a test. We could test with the same similar questions we said before. Next time we will let the Cassie send another message. What's the last joke we talked about? And set the recipient to be Joe. Okay. Will this time will they remember what's the last joke? Let's check that. Bingo! Joe responded, the last joke we talked about was the Scarecrow winning award because he was outstanding in his field. And they, they also follow the same termination condition. And uh, so we see this time Cassie said, I got go. So Joe also knew that's a signal of stopping the conversation. It will stop replying. So this demonstrated a way to mix agent work in conversations, start a conversation, continue the conversation, remember what it did. And this is just a very basic uh, demonstration of how to use a concept agent to construct a conversation between two agents. In the next few lessons, we'll learn many other conversation patterns and some agent design patterns, including tool using, reflection, planning, and code execution, et cetera.